This episode of the Answer is Yes Baja Sessions is brought to you by Baja Bound Insurance Services. Driving to Mexico? You can buy and print out your Mexican auto insurance policy online in minutes with their easy-to-use website. They also have great travel information to help you plan your trip south of the border. Visit BajaBound.com. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Baja Sessions podcast. My name is Jim Riley. Ryan is out this week, so uh, I'm covering him for him, and I think I'm going to take an easy break. Actually, the timing is perfect. We're going to re-air a show that we had on last year with Chef Deborah Schneider. And uh, she is a Baja chef. Her, she's inspired by all things in Baja. She is the chef over at Sol Cucina in Newport Beach, as well as Solita Tacos. And the reason why we're re-airing this show is that she is featured on Guy Fieri's Grocery Games today. And we wanted to celebrate that with Deb and all of her efforts and successes in what she's been doing. And we really appreciate her spin on Baja up here in Southern California. And by the way, if uh, you're interested in her cooking style or learning how to cook the Baja way, on the BajaUnitedWines.com website, we sell her book. It's called Baja Cooking on the Edge by Chef Deborah Snyder. It's great. It has all kinds of incredible recipes, some stories about Baja, a lot of helpful information, and um, just some beautiful photos to look at and inspire you to take your own trip down to Baja. So I hope you enjoy this re-air. Again, we just wanted to celebrate Chef Deb and all of her accomplishments and her airing on Guy's Grocery Games. Actually, it's Wednesday the 24th that that show's airing live. So best of luck to you, Chef Deb. Thank you for tuning in. Hello and welcome to the Answers Yes podcast. I'm here at the Blue Sea Advertising Headquarters. Once in a while we get over here and we record this show. It gives us an opportunity to pick up some great Orange County people, some executives and chefs and business leaders. And today, I'm with somebody from one of my favorite restaurants down here. I have a few. Um, Don't think that I'm not thinking about you other guys. You know who you are. But I'm with Chef Deborah Schneider from Soul Cucina. How are you today? I'm doing great, Jim. Hi. (laughs) You know, I come from Upland, and I just love coming over the hill and into the Orange County area and, you know, you see the ocean in the distance and the buildings and you know all the good things that happen down here. Oh, it's it's amazing just to live on the Pacific Ocean. I live in Pacific Beach in San Diego. Oh, okay. And Seoul is my closest restaurant, which is 81 miles away, but it's worth it. But I get to live here. Yeah, just a short 81. So I, I've been very interested in having you on the show because not only do I love your restaurant, you, it, which is across the street from my grandparents' house, so that makes it very convenient for me to see them and eat some great food, um, but I also love your connectivity to Baja. It's, you know, that's, it, I have a long, long story, and we're going to get around and around <laughs> and around to all these times that I said yes, but the first time I came to California... Uh, I went to Baja, California, and I just looked around, and I went, yes, this place is amazing, amazing. It's an easy one to say yes to, especially when, especially, well, where you live, you're close enough to the border where you're not too affected. You you still hold on to a lot of that culture in the southern part of, you know, the beach cities. Mm -hmm. I noticed the further you get north, you get up to Santa Monica, you kind of forget how close you are to Mexico, and it feels more like the cement jungle up there. Yeah, I, I kind of have this this thing in my mind of California the way it was, uh, maybe because I'm married to a surfer, but California in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s when it was just a little string of these surf towns all the way down to the border. And then when you did cross into Mexico, you just, you know, wave at the guard, you know, give them something from Jack in the Box and away you go into Baja. (laughs) There was nothing. Yeah. There was nothing. And uh, it was a, a, a California way of life that's really kind of, disappeared yeah in a way but that's where our culture comes from that's where i want to circle back to your beginning but i want to ask you about something i had a guest on the show just this last monday on our baja session show and he created a historic map it's Mm -hmm. actually leather bound on canvas it's really cool it's all the old roads and his notion was adventure baja like we did 30 40 years ago he was the one responsible for bringing paul newman down way back when Mm -hmm. But, you know, he said one of the better things, and I want to know how you feel about this, because at first I was taken back, and then after I digested it, I thought, maybe he's got a point. He said one of the better things that had happened to Baja in general were some of the the negative things, like um, the swine flu and some of the crime and different things like that. And the reason why he said that is because prior to that, Baja was becoming 
like um, Girls Gone Wild Mm -hmm. in Tijuana, Rosarito, Ensenada, Cabo. And once those things happened, people started to clear out a little bit, meaning the tourists. Mm -hmm. And then it allowed Mexico and Baja to recenter itself and be proud of who they are again in terms of their goods, their wares, their the wine that they produce, the craft beer movement, the food movement, the, mm-hmm. the crafts and the culture and the art. And he thought, you know, it gave them a chance to recenter. And it's, I wouldn't necessarily put it in that perspective, but I do know that there's an incredible amount of pride that I see right now as opposed to 20 years ago with the wine, the food, the craft beer, mm-hmm. and the culture. Yeah. I, th- I think generationally it's caught up with itself. Mm-hmm. That, that's a really good point about the girls gone wild versus being a serious culture. When I was researching uh, the Baja book, yeah, I was down there. I was talking to a lot of old timers, and I was researching, I want to say 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I remember somebody said something to me that I've never forgotten. They, they were talking about how bad the roads used to be yeah. when you were down there. When you went down, it was serious business. Oh, yeah. We used to go down surfing. It was serious stuff. You didn't go by yourself. You needed the right kind of truck. But they said, you know, uh, good roads. Oh, no, it was <laughs> bad roads bring good people. Yeah. Good roads bring all kinds of people, which I thought was very diplomatic. Yeah. Um, and the easier it is to get down there, the easier it is for uh, the culture to change. But uh, Baja Californios, are, they really do have a culture. They really do have a sense of, of place and history and why they're there and where they come from. Mm-hmm. And they're tough because, you know, when you emigrated there in the beginning of the 20th century, even if you emigrated there in the 1950s, Baja California was a hard place to live. Yeah, sure. Uh, very resource-based. There might be miners, maybe you were fishermen, but whatever it was, you worked hard for it on your ejido. And now it's got a little, you know, it's got a little Hollywood glamour, <laughs> a little glitz over it, but that that heart is still there, and that's, that's the part that I love about yeah. Baja. When you go into Ensenada and you see the old parts of Ensenada, or you go up the valley, or you go into any of the rural areas, um, it's still very much a place. Even though my sense from the rest of Mexico was that Baja was kind of like the Wild West, and there's really nothing there, Mm -hmm. they're proud frontiersmen in Baja and women. Yeah. Well, I think it's the heart that they have down there that's attracted me so much, and that's where I'm such uh, a proponent of Mm pro-tourism, and I want to show people what's happening down there. At the same time, I don't want to ruin it, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it, it's that heart that that I think about when I introduce people to Baja. So with that in mind, let, let's circle back a little bit um, where your humble begin. You mentioned Canada, where you where things started out for you. So let's hear the Canada story. <laughs> oh, the Canada story. Uh, well, I'm from southern Ontario, Canada, which um, it was settled by Scots English in the 1820s. And that's where my family's been forever and ever. And mm-hmm. I always had incredibly etchy feet but my first job I didn't go to college Uh, I also said no to college my first job real job was editing magazines oh wow Um, okay my family had a small newspaper and I moved to Toronto and started writing I wrote the Toronto Blue Jays magazine I did all these sports magazines Winnipeg Jets uh, soccer Um, so I was a baseball writer when I was 22 years old and um didn't like office work. I no. Hated, hated, <laughs> I hate office work. I was just like, I'm so miserable, but I really, really like to eat. So um, my boyfriend at the time and I uh, came up with an idea to go and take our motorcycle to Europe mm-hmm. and just drive around Europe for a couple of years okay. and see what happened. I don't know who brought it up, but we both said, yes, let's do yeah. that. You okay, know, because well. that's what you do when you're 22 years old. You go, yeah, sounds like a great idea. Let's get a tent and a BMW. So uh, we went there. When I came back, um, we had wound up working in Greece on yachts, Mm -hmm. on these big charter boats out of uh, Piraeus, out of Athens. And we had a connection that needed crew, and that's where I started cooking, was on these yachts. In Greece, on a yacht. Yeah. For tourists, obviously. Yeah. um, Actually, private owners. Oh, even better. Private owners, yeah. Um, one One of them was the... Uh, former chairman of Mobile Oil, who was a lovely guy, and his wife used to wear curlers around on the <laughs> Fair Bill Tavalaris, nice man. Um, but it, it represented a big shift in in my direction because I was no longer, you know, going to sit in an office and pump out magazines and write about baseball. I was going to cook. Yeah, I decided I wanted to cook, so that's what I did. Went back, uh, did six months, and went to Florida, and then wound up 
out here through another interesting set of circumstances. Well, hey, we're here for that. So <laughs> get, share just a little bit of that circumstance. You know, you, you've you traveled some long distances to get to your final resting point. Yeah, I don't think I'm done yet either. There's still Australia. You know, <laughs> I haven't been there yet. No, but um, so you did wind up out here in California. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was it that you discovered once you got here that, that made you stay? Because obviously you're still here now. Mm. Um, well, growing up in Canada, number one, the, the climate. Uh, number two, there's, there's, I love being outside. Yeah. I love the outdoors. Um, not lying on a beach necessarily, but just being able to live in this kind of environment was everything to me. So I determined that I would find a way to make a living here. So I went into restaurants and started Mm -hmm. cooking. My first job, I literally didn't even know how to turn on a commercial range. Mm -hmm. I was like, we're, you know, how to, (laughs) and then when it was turned on, it was like this huge flame. (laughs) It was scary. Uh, but I, I hung in, obviously. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was quite a while ago. That was almost 36 years ago. So Any any places you want to mention that you were at back in the day? Any of those places still uh, around? Dobson's in San Diego, La Grande Tapa. Um, I ran the Del Mar racetrack for four years yeah. uh, before I signed on with my partners here. Hilton, I worked for Hilton Torrey Pine, for Pines, uh, plural, for six years. Um, Kimpton. A lot of little restaurants here and there. So, you know, yeah, mostly San Diego stuff. I made the jump to Orange County when I met my current partners and said yes to them. So you're down in San Diego bouncing around to some places. None of those sounded very Baja flair to me. No. What what, what, uh, what got you interested in heading south of the border and down to Baja? Was it another one of those BMW adventure days? <laughs> Surfing, following. Uh, I married a surfer, so... You know, it's like we're going. I'm like, okay. You know, it's just, it's, and I love camping. I mean, I'm, I could live on the beach for weeks. I'm just fine. So, yeah. Uh, that was the travel part of it. And the food part of it for me, uh, for Sol and Solita, came out of working in restaurants in California with Mexicans. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all cooks ever do is talk about food. Yeah. Right? Of when, course. You're, when you're talking, you're not busy. You talk about food. So, Um, I would be talking to the guys that I was working with because I was usually the only English-speaking person in the kitchen and the only woman. Mm -hmm. I said, just call me Jose. It's fine. (laughs) You know, I'm just, I'm one of you. Um, And that's how I learned about Mexican food. That was my entry to being interested in it because we'd be cooking, you know, French and fusion, California, but we'd be talking about Mexico. Yeah. Because, you know, they were always homesick. Of course. And so instead of learning about Mexican food by going to restaurants or reading books, I would stand next to somebody who would tell me about going out and catching grasshoppers mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, the state that he grew up in and what the food was like there and what his mother cooked and what his grandmother cooked. And the romance of it was just because I'm a history geek. I love food with roots anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just captured my imagination so much. And um, that was when I started researching the Baja book, because Baja has its own foodway. Central Mexico, each state, it's very distinctive. But Baja has its own foodway, and that foodway is the same one that California has. So it really informs our state of mind and what we do here. And when you hit it right on, which I think we do, it's like, oh, yeah, (laughs) this is our little part of the world here. Yeah. Yeah. This is what we do. And you're absolutely right about that. I've spent a lot of time in mainland Mexico with my tequila business. And uh, the culture and the food are very different over there. Mm-hmm. The heart is still the same. Mm-hmm. And that's that heart of the Mexicans that we talk about and that we love so much. But the food is very different. Um, so I, I love that you married a surfer. I've been a surfer since 1983. I've spent a lot of time in a tent down in Mexico. Mm-hmm. But it's also where you discover some of those foods in those random surf spots, you know, take a risk, let's have some tacos here. Or you meet a family and mm-hmm. next thing you know, you're in their dining room at a lo- in a local village because you're hungry and, and they're nice and you brought them something that they'd yes. never seen before. Um, any experiences like that for you that you want to share or uh, very unique surf spots that uh, really attracted you to being down there? I can't tell you the really good ones. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> well, they're discovered now, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're all called secret spot. Um, you know, driving down, we would hit street stands. We didn't go to restaurants. Um, it would always be stop at the taqueria, this place. Oh, we have to have this guy's clam, you know, because mm-hmm. he does the clam cocktail. Puero across from the black market in Ensenada. 
um, or this place has fish soup and, you know, we're going to stop 